All right, so as we get into larger sets of objects, rather than just a single probability, but the probability of multiple things occurring, we have to look at how we're going to group these events. And that is where permutations and combinations come in. Typically looking at the same event occurring in how many different ways uh, it can occur. But for that, we need to define a new operator. The factorial, which just looks like an exclamation mark, just wants us to multiply all the positive whole number values up to the value with the factorial. So for instance, 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And a lot of times we won't actually include the 1 because multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value. And you'll also notice that on the 3 factorial, I, count, I counted up from 1. 1, 2, 3. 5 factorial, I counted down from the 5. Counting down from the number to 1 is usually easier when we're doing algebra with these. But you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 1. Something of note is that 0 factorial is equal to 1. And that's really for the same reason that if you raise something to a 0 power, it equals 1. Not because of any multiplication by 0 or 1 or something fancy. It's because 0 factorial is empty. It doesn't actually exist. And so instead, what we see is the imaginary coefficient there being that. The zero factorial just goes away and you get the one. But it's a rule. Remember, zero factorial is equal to one. And the way that factorials are useful to us right now is that factorials can tell us how many ways a group of objects can be arranged. Let's say we have five objects. Here's the top Amazon result. Hush. All right. Say we have five objects. Okay. You could choose any of the five objects for the first one. But then your second choice only has four options. And your third choice only has three. Your second choice, and or your fourth choice, and your last choice. And so what we end up with is the total number of ways we could arrange them is 120. Or five ways for the first choice, four ways for the second choice, three ways for the third choice, two ways for the fourth choice, and then our last choice, we only have one option left. So the factorial gives us a way of counting how many ways there are to arrange objects, which is going to be good for permutations and combinations, which want to know how many ways there are of arranging objects when order is or is not important. So let's look at those definitions now. So combination. Combination is an arrangement of objects when order is not important. So we're using three objects, A, B, and C. You notice here, A, B, C, B, A, C, C, A, B, A, C, B. Even though the order of all of those is different, it would all be a single combination because it has the same elements. So in this case, we don't really care how the objects are arranged. We're more interested in what objects we have. So combinations, order is not important. Whereas for a permutation, the arrangement of the objects is important. So if you're running a race, you kind of want to know who was in first, who was in second, who was in third. That's a permutation. Okay. The order is important. And so here, even though I have the exact same groupings of letters, A, B, C, 
BAC, CAB, ACB, this would be four permutations because the ordering of those objects changes each time. So a permutation is when order is important. So now I'm going to look at two example problems of these, and then I'll do some of the exercises on Khan Academy so we can see how that works. But we're going to do combinations first. Here we go. Now, we're going to give you the formula as well, but combinations. How many sandwiches can you make if you can choose three toppings from a selection of ten toppings? So you've got a buffet. It's got ten toppings for your sandwich. You can select three of them. Well, here's our formula. N choose R where n is the total number of options. In this case, we have 10 total options. We can choose 10 toppings. R is the number of actual choices we can make. So even though we have 10 toppings, we can only choose three of them. So it would be 10 choose three, or 10 combine three. But choose is a little nicer. And then we've got this weird formula, n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial. Okay. I'm going to break down this formula real quick. n factorial, 10 factorial, is the number of ways that we could arrange 10 objects. It's the permutations of 10 objects. Then, n minus r factorial Say, look, I'm only choosing three of them so I can get rid of or divide out the arrangements of the seven objects that I'm not choosing. So we're going to get rid of the seven factorial, the arrangement of seven objects. But because we also do not care about the order, I'm going to divide by three factorial to get rid of all the different ways that we can arrange the three objects that we have left. Which can be confusing, especially since you only have that one explanation, and I'm not doing a few more examples in class or time. But what happens with our sandwich is that we get 10 choose 3. 10 factorial is the number of sandwiches we could make total if we cared what order the toppings went on. That's a lot of sandwiches, but 10 factorial. Then, on the bottom, 10 minus 3 factorial leaves me with 7 factorial, and then the 3 factorial. And then, to simplify this, I'm going to expand the largest value, which in this case is the 10. And so you see, that's what I've done here. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. You notice I stopped there because the rest of this expansion... 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 7 factorial. So the reason I expanded the largest value is because I know that somewhere in that expansion I'm going to find one of my smaller factorials and I can use that to cancel it out, which is exactly what I did here. I expanded 10, 10 times 9 times 8 until I got to 7 which I recognized matches this 7 factorial on the bottom, and then I just canceled them out. So that left me with 10 times 9 times 8 over 3 factorial. Then I went ahead and expanded the 3 factorial, so 3 times 2 times 1, and reduced a little bit. I know 9 divided by 3 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I could simplify my multiplication to just 10 times 3 times 4, which gives me 120 different sandwiches that we can make from a selection of 10 toppings where we are allowed to choose 3. Now in this case, I knew it was going to be a combination because the order technically doesn't matter. Although we are aware that the way you layer a sandwich does in fact matter, but we're going to assume it doesn't here. So order didn't matter. So if I chose uh, black olives, lettuce, and cheese, 
it doesn't matter if I put the lettuce on first and the black olives and the cheese, or the cheese on first and the lettuce and the black olives. There would be the same sandwich effectively. Okay? It's a combination. This is our formula. In factorial over in minus R in parentheses factorial, R factorial, and then we just work it down by the order of operations. So I did the parentheses first, followed by the factorial, which is like a grouping symbol, so it's a parentheses grouping symbol, so we always do the factorial first, and then my multiplication and division as it occurs in the problem. Combinations, order does not matter. Permutations are very similar. Like the formula is almost identical, but because the order is important, it loses that R factorial on the bottom. So our example here is a race. If there are 10 people in a race, I want to know how many permutations of the top three racers are there. So the people who are going to finish first, second, and third in the race. Now, at the beginning of the race, we have 10 people to choose from. So there are 10 factorial ways that the race could be finished from first to 10. 10 factorial, very big number. But since we are only concerned with the top three, first, second, and third, I need to get rid of the seven other racers who don't finish first, second, and third. So that's how we get the formula. 10 factorial, or the total number of ways that this could happen, and then divide out the ones we don't need. Which in this case, 10 minus 3 factorial. In choose R, same thing with a P there. We have a 10 factorial over 7 factorial here. There are 10 racers. We don't care about 7 of them. Expand the largest, 10 times 9 times 8, and there's my 7 factorial again. As I'm expanding the largest, at some point I will run into smaller factorial. I can cancel that out, and it turns out now 10 times 9 times 8 is 720. So at the start of the race, there are 720 different ways that we could get a first, second, and third place racer out of those 10 original racers. The lottery is a combination. Doesn't matter what order your numbers are in, just that you got all of the numbers. So there's six numbers. You can actually figure out your chances of winning the lottery by looking at one over the number of combinations. I think the lottery is out of what, 36? So it's 36 choose six. But the lottery is not a permutation. The locks, those master locks with the dials, those are permutations. There are three numbers in the code. But if you put them in in the wrong order, that lock is not going to open. So combination, order is not important. Permutation, order is important. These are our formulas. Remember, the formulas are almost identical. N factorial over N minus R factorial. The only difference is that the combination formula has the R added onto it, R factorial, to get rid of the arrangements, the ordering part of the permutation. All right. So on Khan Academy, you have three exercises dealing with just permutations and combinations. So we're going to go through those now, hopefully relatively quickly. Look at the combinations, then permutations, and then trying to differentiate between the two. There it goes. All right. So combinations first. And let's make this a little bigger. So it says, Lewis is packing his bags for his vacation. He has nine unique toy animals, but only five fit in his bag. How many different groups of five toy animals can he take? Well, 
He has nine total. But since only five fit in his bag, he has to choose five. And the order doesn't matter. Regardless of which animal goes in first, second, or third, they're all going to be in the bag. So order, in this case, does not matter. So we're going to use our combination formula, which would be 9 factorial over 9 minus 5 factorial, and then 5 factorial to get rid of the ordering of those five objects. And then I just work it. I'm going to expand the largest one. Well, we know 9 minus 5 is 4, so that's a 4 factorial. Expanding the largest one, I have 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. And then there's my overlapping factorial, 4 factorial and 5 factorial. I can cancel that. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand the 4 factorial as well, so I can see what I can cancel farther. So 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 is all I have left on the top. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but I'm going to leave the 1 off because multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value. And then we're going to do some cancelization. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, and then 2 divided by 2 cancels completely. The 9 and the 6 I can divide by 3, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do the 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So what I have left is 3 times 7 times 6. And then I just go ahead and multiply those together. So 3 times 7 is 21 times 6, what, 126? 126. That is how many groups of five toy animals he could make. 126. And the rest of these should follow that same pattern. They're all combinations. So effectively, you're going to figure out how many total options do you have how many are you selecting? Plug it into the formula and then just evaluate down. Okay. And most of your calculators can do in choose R or in PR as well. Just look up how do I do uh, permutations or combinations on my calculator. And Google should give you a nice video about that. I don't think there's a way that I could really show it to you here for your individual calculators. But... Uh, you just got a free ticket for a boat ride, and you can bring along three friends. Unfortunately, you have six friends who want to come along. This one, combinations, doesn't matter what order. You got three friends, whether you pick that one first or this one first. So it's six, choose three, which we would set up as six factorial over six minus three in parentheses factorial and then three factorial and again just working through that which I am going to cheat so we have six choose three and we end up with that should evaluate out to 20. I just want to see if there is an example of one that does not work that way. Stephanie's packing her bags. She has seven books. Only three fit in her bag. That would be seven. Choose three. So again, if we set this up, this is the total number. This is how many she is actually choosing. Order is not important. So it would be seven. Choose three which would be 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 in parentheses factorial 3 factorial. Which is 35. And 
And then this was exactly the same thing. Ashley's packing her bag. She has seven unique socks. Only three. I'm assuming that's a pair of socks. And not that she just has seven different socks. Who knows? She could be a free spirit when it comes to socks. But that's going to be 35 as well, since it's really the same scenario. You got seven things. You got to choose three. It doesn't matter what the things are. All right. So... Permutations then will work the same way, so I'm not going to go through all of these. We'll try to get two out of the way. All right. Okay. Here, you have six reindeer, and then it lists their names, and you want to have four fly your sleigh. You always have your reindeer fly in a single file line. How many different ways can you arrange your reindeer? In this case, order is kind of important. So lead reindeer, second, third, fourth. They're in a single file line. It's not just that they're all grouped together, but the order is going to be a little important. So we're going to use a permutation. So we want to look at, well, how many reindeer are there total? Well, there's six. But we have to choose four of them. So it's six permute four. How many permutations of, six, or of four objects can we get out of six? Remember, this is just like the combination formula, except without that last R factorial. So this is six factorial. And on the bottom, in parentheses, six minus four factorial. So then I do my parentheses first. 6 minus 4 is 2. So this is 6 factorial over 2 factorial. Remember the order of operations. Division happens after your function. So we have to do the factorial first. So I can't just go 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial is 3 factorial. That does not work. Okay. Cannot do that. What you have to do is expand the factorials until something cancels. Which in this case, the larger factorial is the 6, so we would expand that. We have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. And then finally, we get to that 2 factorial. So we can stop there because I know that the rest of that would cancel. Which is only 1. So this would become 6 times 5 times 4 times 3. 6 times 5 is 30 times 4 is 120 times 3 would be 360. Now let's do... So you'll notice permutations tend to have much larger values than combinations because combinations aren't worried about the order. It just chooses four reindeer, puts them on the sled, doesn't care which one's first, second, third, or fourth. The permutations do care who's first, who's second, who's third, and who's fourth. So there's going to be a lot more permutations than combinations for the same selection group. Six choose four would be much less. But in this case, we have 360 different ways to arrange our reindeer. Make me walk with you. Okay. And there we go. That's the other form. So this one doesn't give you, you know, you got seven unique things, you want to choose four. Instead, it gives you a word. How many unique ways are there to arrange the letters in the word tiger? Well, there are one, two, three, four, five letters. So it's 
five permute five, which is just five factorial. Okay. I'm going to explain that out. So we have to make five choices. Well, how many ways can I make the first choice? Well, five. But that means one of the letters is now gone, say T. How many ways can I then make the next choice? Well, four. And this one was E. And then three, we chose I, two, G, one, finally the R. Now, I was just showing you that as you make a selection, first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter, fifth letter in the arrangement, you lose a letter. And so the number of options that you have decreases. And so we can see it builds that factorial pattern. Five times four times three times two times one. Five factorial is 120. And so our answer here would be just 120.